So, as many of you know, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of the Scott GSR, and unfortunately lots of people have made quite nasty claims on why I'm not a big fan of it. You know, I am such an Avon fanboy, I hate this mask because it's not the S10, you know, all sorts of things like that. I am giving this mask a bad reputation because I personally don't like it. Now, if you don't know, I bought this mask quite a few years ago. It wasn't uh, obviously one of the first masks in my collection, it was probably like well over the tenth or something like that. And I already had an S10 by that point, quite an old one from the 1980s, but this was when, this wasn't too long after, this is probably about 2013 or something I bought the GSR, and that was, um, it was a brand new one basically, whether or not how legal it was I don't know to own, but it was one where um, lots and lots of them just turned up on eBay, all in brand new, all still wrapped up, everything was in the uh, kit bag. So I bought the GSR, and and I paid close to £100 for it, as was the retail price of the new ones at the time. And, obviously, I was quite looking forward to getting it, and I was quite looking forward to owning it. I thought, wow, cool, this is an advanced new gas mask. And the more time I spent with it, the less and less I began to like it. Now, quite a lot of people in the comments, former soldiers who watch my videos, said that, you know, this seems an alright mask, but they preferred the S10. And I thought that was kind of a nostalgia thing to start with, but the more and more time you kind of look at this mask and evaluate its strengths and weaknesses, the more you realise they're actually completely correct. And I wouldn't actually say, you know, the S10 is better than this in every way. The point is more so that this is a mask that's not fit for purpose for what it's actually for. Now, if the more you read up on these online, the more you realise that this would be a very good mask for sort of a civilian more than a military use. Partially because the mask isn't built tough enough to actually withstand military use, which the S10 was because it was a far simpler mask. But the problems go a bit deeper than that because I've done some digging around and I've found some documents which I'll put up as a picture slideshow at the end of the video that the British government was well aware and the MOD was well aware when they did the trials for a new respirator because this mask wasn't originally called the GSR. Um, it was The GSR was like the general service respirator sort of project, and there was a couple of competing masks that were trialled, and basically they had the mask that was the Avon M50 and this mask, the mask that became the GSR, the Scott one. And the Avon mask pretty much won the majority of the trials and did better in the trials, but basically Scott then said, well, we'll give you a cheaper price for the masks, and the government out of cheapness went with this mask. Funnily enough, when those same trials were done in America, with the same competing masks, they overwhelmingly went for the Avon M50, which is why Avon got an order for like 2 million plus of them for the United States military service stuff. So, what are my gripes with this mask? I've gone over this before. Firstly, it's very bulky and heavy, uh, not comfortable to carry around with you. I've actually got the respirator kit bag on my leg um, at the moment, and yeah, it's a very bulky, hefty bag. You wouldn't want to be carrying this around with a lot of other equipment if you're a soldier. The filters get in the way of shooting, and yes, I am aware that you can twist these filters to reverse, which is meant to give you more clearance of a rifle, but people have been telling me that this filter will still knock the fire selector on an L85 if you're doing that. It's also just bulky and doesn't let you shoulder a rifle properly. In the test, they also found out that soldiers could not accurately aim their rifles either with scopes or with iron sights while wearing these masks. That's not a great feature is it. Um, they also had lots of sizing issues with these masks as I said people keep saying yours is too large for you but I've got it in the size that fits me with every other respirator. They also have an inner and outer mask with these that you might be able to see there and the other issue is that the inner masks and outer masks often don't correlate very well size wise with each other. I took that stupid thing that was in the inside out the other day managed to pull it out this thing the it catches condensation so you can exhale it thing easier. In the report apparently they don't work at all so it's just more dead weight in the mask and bulk. Um, the chin area is not very comfortable firstly because of that and also because the chin bits isn't a proper chin rest so as you can see your chin is actually going to be sticking into um, that section there. Now I've also talked about the shoddy glue job done around the outside of the respirator before but as you can see Maybe there's a dodgy thing there and a dodgy weld job done on the rubber there. Also, this bit that keeps falling off. Now, I managed to get mine on quite tight recently, but there, that is one of the complaints that this bit would fall off. 
so if that bit falls off you've got a problem not a very big voice diaphragm also a problem uh, not very good for clipping on radios apparently that was on the issues brought up in the report with it as well and the biggest fault with this was that mine doesn't have this fault luckily but on the inside here on lots of the pictures, and I'll put some pictures examples in, you can see light shining through, which means there was a hole in the mask and a lot of them issued. And that meant that the mask was completely unfit for service. If you were wearing it and there was a nerve gas attack, you would die. And apparently no quality control checks were done before they were handed out to British soldiers. So that's great, isn't it? You can't trust your equipment that's meant to keep you alive. Um, another issue is apparently lots of masks had broken drinking tube straws uh, connectors inside. Somebody was saying to me in the comments that they bought a load of GSRs and they were all broken. Why did the MODD mob them like that? It wasn't the MODD mobbing them like that. It was actually the quality control of these out of the factory. So, there you go. That's my complaints with the mask. Um, as you know, I'm not a fan of it. But that's not because I want to be an Avon fanboy. Uh, let me list some other masks other than Avon masks I like more than this mask. The Israeli 4A1, the Israeli M15, the Soviet SHMS, um, the Forshida F2A4, that's another one I really like. Probably the Nokia M61s with a 60 to 40mm connector on it. The Canadian C3 actually with a 60 to 40mm connector on it. It's just, there are so many masks that are better than this thing. The issue is with this mask that basically it's the Avon M50 but made on the cheap where everything is, you know, bulkier and heavier and not as well thought out. So anyway, that's enough about me complaining about it. Now let me actually show you some evidence that this is known to be a problematic and a bit crap mask.